at least when we do this in like middle school and high school, we define Here's what, I found. what are the chances that there is life on Jupiter. Big gassy planet, far away from the sun, super high gravity, the weird red storm, who knows what's going on there. Take two, we're gonna try this one again. I got all kinds of crazy off topic. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time it is where you are. Welcome to your Tuesday Math Minute, the only Math Minute guaranteed to be on Tuesday and guaranteed to be no more than 10 minutes long. First of all, to be clear, because I know some of you are curious, yes, we are finally going to see who wins the giveaway for the amazing iPhone 8 box. I am so excited about it. I know you're excited about it. I don't know if I'm gonna have time, but hey, thank you so much to my notification squad. Uh, won the play button for my 50 subscribers, although it's actually gone down. Um, since I presume the play button was created, I lost a subscriber. To the subscriber out there that I lost, I want you back. What can I do to get you back? But thank you for subscribing. Like and subscribe this video. Comment down below with all the stuff that I got wrong as I discussed probability today. Okay, so I argued with someone on the internet the other day. I know, I'm not supposed to. And I was gonna show the, the XKCD someone was wrong on the internet comic, um, but I'm pretty sure after having done the work for today's video that I I was the one who was wrong on the internet. So we'll see. I, I want to talk about probability. I wanted to do this for a few reasons, probability and Excel. Uh, one, because I'm going to use an Excel spreadsheet today to uh, select our winner for the iPhone 8 box for the giveaway. Uh, two, because this came up in a somewhat unrelated discussion I was having with someone on the internet. So uh, Dan Meyer, very famous, uh, I mean, I don't know about very famous, but well-known math teacher, um, edgy celebrity, and I say that with all due respect. Uh, he posted this exercise, and I want to look at the exercise with you because we're going to do some probability work with the exercise. Okay, it's right here. The way this activity works is we're supposed to select in any given year who we think the president was. Red bars mean we think it was a Republican who was president. Blue bars are going to mean that we think it's a Democrat. And for our purposes, what's important is obviously we can flip these on and off or think of them as flips of a coin because there are only two possible outcomes, right? So I can select whatever I want to select. I can say, check my answers. And it's going to tell me, all right, you got some right, you got some wrong. And I'm interested in this because Dan Meyer, when he showed the results later on, he said people only selected the correct president 48% of the time, worse than random chance. And that got me thinking, is that actually worse than random chance here? What can we do to try to quantify what truly random responses would produce on this activity, how often we would get things right or wrong if we were just guessing. We know that unlike flips of a coin, presidencies are always gonna have a run of at least four at a time, you know, always within reason. We're not talking about Nixon era politics, where I'm not gonna get into that. Uh, within reason, we should be expecting runs of four at a time, four or eight, uh, depending on whether or not a president was reelected. And so that made me think, is that knowledge going to be be helpful to us, or does it actually make it harder to guess correctly at random? So this would be kind of a weird situation where the knowledge that presidencies come in these certain runs could make us worse at guessing the correct president than if we were just randomly guessing R or D in any given spot. How can we figure out what's going on theoretically? So I want to think about this in terms of probability theory. And usually when we do this for probability, at least in middle school or high school, we define probability in a particular way. We say Probability is the number of outcomes we want divided by the total number of outcomes. But this is actually what I call the naive definition of probability. There's an assumption in this definition that does not always hold true. Before I say what that assumption is, let me give you an example. I want you to think about this question. I want you to actually come up with a number in your head right now. What are the chances? that there is life on Jupiter. Big gassy planet, far away from the sun, super high gravity, the weird red storm, who knows what's going on there. What are the chances there's life on Jupiter? Probably you're thinking of a number like, I don't know, 1%, 0.1%, 0.0001%, low, right? Probably there's not life on Jupiter. Well, I'm gonna posit to you that there is a 50% chance of life on Jupiter. How is it that I can say that? Well, there are two outcomes, right? Either yes, there's life on Jupiter, or no, there's not life on on Jupiter. Yes is one out of those two possible outcomes. Therefore, there's a 50% chance of life on Jupiter. Now, chances are you don't agree with me. You think this is silly because, of course, even though there are two possible responses to this question, those responses are not equally likely. And that is exactly the problem with this definition of probability. 
This definition of probability only works if every outcome is equally likely. If every outcome is not equally likely, we can't simply count up whatever would be on top, whatever would be on bottom, and then put them in a fraction together. Now, with true coin flips, we can usually make the assumption, OK, the outcomes, heads or tails, are equally likely. And so we typically build things like this tree branch diagram. So this is a way to think through what happens after one flip, two flips, three flips, and so on. So one flip, of course, we could get either heads or tails. And then depending on what happened the first flip, the second flip would, of course, also be heads or tails. But again, it would have already considered the fact that the first flip came out heads or tails. And then we do the same thing with the third set of flips and so on. And what we can build with this tree branch diagram is a set of outcomes for some number of flips. Now the first thing that occurred to me when Dan Meyer said, oh my goodness, people are answering this correctly only 48% of the time, that's worse than random chance. First thing that occurred to me is, whoa, 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 should we be assuming that when you aggregate all these responses, because remember, the way the activity works, there are four of these slides, each one has 16 different flips, so it's like we're just looking at 64 coin flips. Should we really be expecting people to get 32 of the 64 right? Like how likely is it actually that we would get exactly 32 out of the 64 flips right? You might notice there that word exactly is playing a pretty important role in the way that I was initially thinking about this. Should we really be expecting that people are going to get 32 out of the 64 flips correct? Or is there some other expectation we should have? And so I started to think through, well, what's going on if we just simplify the situation? For a single flip, of course, yes. Half the time we're gonna get heads, half the time we're gonna get tails. For any single year in that activity, half the time it's gonna be a Democratic president, half the time a Republican president. Or is it? Yes, we can think of it that way right now. For two flips, if we use that tree branch diagram, we get these four outcomes. Could be that both of them come up heads, could be heads and then tails, tails and then heads, or two tails. And what we want to start to do is aggregate some of these possibilities together. For example, you might notice the middle two that I have right now, in both cases, come up heads once. And so we can actually express this as a probability. There is a one-fourth likelihood that heads will come up twice. So I'll just call that heads twice. There is a two out of the four chances, which does reduce down to one half, that heads actually comes up once, right? So heads once is two out of four likely, or 50% likely. And then there's a uh, one in four chance that heads does not come up at all. So heads comes up zero ends. No, that's not a number. Zero times, right? So let's actually change these to times and represent this numerically. If we do something similar with three flips, you can see we can aggregate the possibilities this way. We could come up with heads all three times, and that happens one eighth of the time. We could come up with two heads out of the three flips, and that happens three eighths of the time. Heads comes up just once, three eighths of the time as well, and then one out of every eight uh, uh, outcomes heads does not come up at all. Finally, we can even do this with four flips. I say even, we can do this with as many flips as we want, but I went ahead and wrote it out for four flips as well. 1 16th of the time, heads is gonna come up on all four flips. Four out of 16 times, you're gonna see heads three times. Six out of 16 times, it's gonna come up twice. Four out of 16 times, it'll come up once. One out of 16 times, it'll come up not at all, zero times. What's interesting to me is what's happening here in the middle. Obviously, in some sense, this is the most likely outcome, not most in terms of it's a greater than 50% likelihood, or in this case, even equal to 50% likelihood, but it's the most popular outcome. For heads to come up twice, which also means that tails comes up twice, we see that happening six out of the 16 times. Whereas any other outcome are all smaller than that six out of 16. But in the aggregate, that's not 50%. And so again, the first thing I thought with Dan Meyer's activity is, well, I, I would not expect someone to get exactly 32 out of the 64 flips. And it turns out when we compute that, so I'll finally, I think I've been recording this. Uh, I had Wolf from Alpha, uh, nope, 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 nope. I had Wolf from Alpha figure this out for us. The chances that we have 32 heads and 32 tails out of 64 is actually only one in 10. So if I were to expect someone to get exactly 32 of these right, that would be very low probability. But that's not quite what we want to know, right? He didn't say, oh my gosh, 48% of the people got half of them right or something. That's not what he was saying. He was saying that on average, people answered it 48% of the time correctly. So again, if you think about it like a coin flip, they're correctly predicting the coin flip 48% uh, of the time. How can we quantify whether that, that's to be expected or not? we need a concept called expected value. And so here's how expected value works. When I come back over here to these coin flips, 
I want to consider the probability of a certain outcome, but then also the numeric representation of that outcome at the same time. And ideally, I would find some way to aggregate all of those possibilities together and express what is likely to happen given a certain number of flips. With the two flip scenario, you can see that one half, that 50% in the middle there. And so it's easy to think, oh, well, that's always going to come up. But obviously on three flips, there's no such thing as a 50% outcome. You can't have one and a half flips come up heads out of those three coin flips, unless you use this thing called expected value, unless we can aggregate both the probabilities and the outcome they represent at the same time. So what we do is we take these probabilities and then the numeric thing that they represent, and we find the product of those. And so we do one fourth times two, and we combine that with the two fourths times one and the one fourth times zero. In other words, if we come up with heads, twice out of the two flips a fourth of the time, it's almost like that counts for one half heads all by itself. And then the two out of four times that we come up with heads once out of the two flips, well, two fourths times one is another two fourths, it's like that's worth another half of a head coin flip. Of course, the one where heads doesn't come up at all ends up being zero, and so our expected value for the number of times we're going to flip heads out of two flips would be one half plus one half, which is one. And again, that's one out of the two flips. Well, what happens if we do that for the three flips instead, right? What happens if we multiply our probability times the numeric representation of the outcome? What do we end up getting? Surprisingly to the way I was thinking about this activity at first, we would get three eighths, that's one eighth times three, plus six eighths, that's three eighths times two, plus another three eighths, that's the three eighths times one, so we're just doing these down down the line, plus zero, and that just so happens to equal 12 over eight, or 1.5. And again, you'll notice that ends up being 1.5 out of the three flips. Any guesses as to what's gonna happen with four flips? I bet you do have a guess. 1 16th times four is the same thing as four over 16. 4 16th times three, 12 over 16. 6 16th times two, also 12 over 16. Four over 16 times one, four over 16. Of course, we get the product of zero. And when we add that all together, what do we get? 32 over 16 equals two expected heads coin flips out of the four flips. So theoretically speaking, we do end up expecting that we're going to get roughly half of these selections correct. But that still didn't sit right with me for a couple different reasons. First of all, and most importantly, if you look at the 31 year spread that Dan Meyer gave, that was 1990, through this year, 2020, 31 is not an even number, right? So it can't have been the case that there were exactly as many Republican presidents as Democratic presidents. And in fact, of course there weren't, there were 15 years in which a Republican was president and 16 years in which case a Democrat was president. So essentially this is not a fair coin. This is a coin that is slightly weighted toward, you know, heads or tails, whichever one you wanna think of as Republican or Democrat. Even beyond that though, there's this issue where we know that presidencies come in runs of four or eight years at a time. And so if we are guessing, but we're off at the start, then our guesses, I thought anyway, should be somewhat worse than if we're guessing at random. Think about it this way. Imagine you're taking a true false test with four questions and you know for sure that either all four questions are true or they're all false. Your best bet is to make sure that you're switching between true and false, true twice and false twice, because then you guarantee that you're gonna get at least two of those questions right. I mean, I say your best bet. Your best bet is just to actually know the answer, but presuming we don't know the answer. We're going to want to alternate in some sense or just make sure that our guesses are varied. So is the fact that we know the presidencies come in runs of four years or eight years actually going to make our probability worse? Well, these questions can be a little bit difficult to tackle theoretically. The weighting of the coin is actually not a huge deal for a reason that maybe we will get to in the next video. I know, I'm so sorry. We're going to have to finish this one right here. Uh, so I'm not going to be doing the giveaway at the end of this video. I hope that is not terribly disappointing to you. But again, we have to say that for tomorrow. I'm so sorry. Thank you for sticking with me through this video. Check back again tomorrow. I will move it up in the rotation. I am going to show you not only who won the giveaway, but how I determined it using an Excel spreadsheet that chose at random from among all your amazing comments. 
Um, if you are angry with me, I understand it. Comment down below with your angry comments. I mean, you know, keep them polite. But even so, I, I, I understand your anger, I feel your pain, and I would love to bear the brunt of that through many comments. And while you're at it, like and subscribe.